Hello students. In this class, we will be learning about JavaScript objects. So now, what is an object? Now, object in JavaScript may be defined as a unordered collection of related data of primitive reference types in the form of key value pairs. Now, object type is very special, yes, because it is not just like a number or it is not just only the string or boolean, right? So, object is a different kind of a data type. Now, all the other types are called primitive because their values contain only one single thing. That's why number can be a number, a string can be a string or a boolean value can be a boolean value, be it a string or number or whatever. But in contrast, objects are used to store collections of data and more complex entities right you can store number here you can store string here you can store boolean values here right you can store any type of data and that is why this is a this is called as an object right that those number string and all those things are called as primitive data types and this is the object now we'll deal with them later in this chapter objects after all we learn more about primitives right so now object can be created with the figure brackets that is the flower brackets with an optional list of properties now we can store any number of values inside a object now a property is a key value pair now just like we learned key value pair in css the same way we are going to assign a key and a value to it now key may be something like name age and all those things and the value is the name of that person age of that person and all those things right where key is a string also called a property name now key is also called as a property name and value can be anything now objects are actually more complex and each object may contain any number any combination of these primitive data types as well as reference data types right it can also uh, contain pointers it can also contain primitive data types right so an object is a reference data type now object is called as a reference data type now variables that are assigned a reference value are given a reference or a pointer to that value right so that reference or pointer points to the location in a memory where object is stored in c language maybe we would have learnt about what is a pointer now pointer is a variable which stores the location of another variable now object can be used to store the location of another variable also right so properties of a uh, javascript object property names can be given strings or numbers or if you want boolean values you can give any key value that is the property names now a property has a key also known as name or identifier before the colon and a value to the right of it so this is an example of how the syntax of creating an object would be right so in a user object now we have created an object called as user let user equals now this is how you create an object the first property has a name right and the value of it is john now whenever you are using a string it should be inside the quotes now whenever you are using a number it should not be inside a code number can be written the like that itself but when you are using a string it should be always inside a double code now second one has a name age and the value 30 that means there are two, two properties here that is name and age and the values have been assigned as john and 30 now as you can see there is a diagram over here that the user is at the bottom and there are two values in it now two property names and the values their name and age the resulting user object can be imagined as a cabinet with two signed files labeled name and age so let us see an example of how exactly we create an object i'm in my browser now so i'm just gonna go to inspect right so i'm gonna go to my console and clear this and i'm gonna check how do we create a object so first is let user equals then i'm gonna create name colon I'm going to give a name, my name, so this is Nitin, then again comma, enter, I'm going to give my age, colon, I'm, my age is 23, so again I'm going to close it with this, so it should always be, it should always end with this semicolon there, right, so after this what I'm going to do, I'm going to call this now, how do I call this, now I want name to be displayed and 
is to be displayed when I click on alert right so how do I do it so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click alert of user dot name so I'm calling that particular name now so user dot name when I do this you can see my name is displayed there that means I am selecting the user object here and inside the user object I am selecting the first parameter that is name right so if you want to call age I am gonna do a alert of user dot age and when I go and see the output you can see my age is displayed here right so this is how you can create a object if you want it to be displayed on the console what I'm gonna do console dot log of user dot name and you can see the output right here right so again I'm gonna do it for the age console dot log of user dot name and I'm gonna check it once again it for the age I'm gonna check it once again and you can see 23 has been displayed here so let us check what happens if we don't give the name and age will directly assign it as user so let us check now uncaught error console is sorry it should be console dot log of you should have user now let us check the output you can see it has been it displays both of the things name it is 23 and age it is 20 sorry name it is Nathan age is 23 right so it displays entirely so you can use it to display the entire object or if you want to do it separately you can also do that there's one more way of creating an object in javascript so let us check one more way of how to do it so now what i'm going to do i'm going to use where i'm going to give my object name as employee equals i'm going to use new here new object so this is how we can create a object so once i do this it says undefined right so again i'm going to put my values inside it that is employee dot id i'm going to give it as 100 right so again you can see 100 is displayed here so again i'm going to give employee employee dot name i'm going to give it as my name so now again my name is displayed here and if I want to display it I'm just gonna use console.log of I'm gonna use employee and I'll check the output you can see my ID is being displayed and my name is also being displayed so of prototype it shows object so that means this is an object so there are different ways of creating a object so this is two of them so you can see many of them are available you can use uh, functions also here Fun functions will be dealing with that later but right now we know how to create an object now so we did it in the console so let us check how to do it in our code editor now here I have created a new uh, JS file that is basics.js I'm gonna write my code here that is let user equals name colon my name then comma i'm gonna add age colon 23 then i am gonna give a semicolon now i'm gonna save it here i've included the script that is basic start jss now what i'm gonna do i'm gonna see this output go back open with live server just refresh it once again right so i have to add a alert here so alert user dot name now if i go and check the output you will see your output as nithin first why because i have given name here so i'm going to give one more alert command let's see what happens alert user dot age and close save nithin click ok again you have second alert that is 23 if i want it to be displayed both what i'm going to alert of user so now we have three alerts one two and sometimes object object will come right so what you have to do instead of that you have to you can name it like this or
when you are using alert of user some you will get something like object object so what should we do for that what you can do here is sometimes it happens user doesn't alert in alert if you use directly the object name you will get it as object and object to make sure you get the property name and the value what you can use you can use json dot stringify now json is a javascript object notation now remember javascript object notation so this will show you how exactly an object is uh, looks on the screen or looks inside a particular object so to use that you can use json dot stringify of you can give the object name now so just close it now refresh just click once again now again refresh you can see my property is also here my name is also here my property is also here my age is also here now json is javascript object notation so now whatever you are writing this format this format is called as json format now this json format is usually used in mongodb databases right in mongodb you have to feed the data using this format itself you have to create an object for each specific thing and then you have to upload it to the mongodb now if you are giving directly then the mongodb doesn't accept the data you should be in the json format right javascript object notation so this was about objects everything actually in javascript is a object right javascript is a template based on not it is not a class based uh, structure right it is a object based structure great now let us move on to our next topic right that is functions now what is a function quite often we need to perform a similar action in many places of the script for example we need to show a nice looking message when a visitor logs in logs out or maybe somewhere else right so some functions are the main building blocks of a program they allow the code to be called many times without repetition now we have already seen examples of building functions like alert prompt confirm right but we can create functions of our own right so there are two different types of functions one is building functions and one more is user defined functions right we can also define our functions by giving certain rules and certain things which we want to perform we can do that also and we can create our functions now what does a function do this function allows us to code without repeating the same code right using using only that particular code we can execute the program more than once or more than 10 times so now it happens we can give anything inside a function right we can create our own function let, let us see an example right so javascript function is a block of code designed to perform a specific task uh, javascript function is executed when something calls it now what does a function do when when you guys would have learnt about c language where you had functions right so you create a function that is you declare a function then you define a function now if you want the function to work what you will do you will call that function you will invoke that function right so that is what is invoking a function the same way we can also create our function in javascript and we can also invoke that function right so let us see how do we do it now this is function declaration now to create a function we can use a function declaration now this is a syntax of it that is function name parameters and inside that we can give our body now what it is in a simple example of function that is show message of alert now whenever i invoke that function the message should come as hello everyone so let us see an example and how to do it so i'm in my last program so what i'm going to do i'm going to remove all of this first i don't want this this is an object so let us remove this so here i'm going to create a function how to create a function function show message right function show message of open the flower brackets here i'm going to give it as alert hello everyone right so when i do this i close this not inside it should be outside so let us see the output of it remember we just have declared it we have not invoked it right i told you function declaration is different function this is called as function declaration now this is called as function definition 
right you are writing the things inside it that is function definition you are defining the function now this is just declaring the function but what happens here is if you just refresh it your output won't be there why because you have not invoked the function now how to invoke the function just write the function name i have given function name as show message and again just this is how you can invoke a function now when you click control s you can see the output that is hello everyone right so this, this is how you can create a function so let us create one more function that is to add different numbers so first of all we have to give variables right so i'll give it as um, 5 and uh, 8 so 5 and 8 is our function parameters now after that what i'm going to do i'm going to do all change all of this and inside that i'm going to put return i'm going to put it as 5 into 8 right so i'll close it now it is asking for an error so in what i'm going to do now is i'm just going to give as p1 and p2 now here i'm going to give p2 and here i'm going to give it as p1 so let us check this output and see what happens now nothing happens right instead of doing this in a particular different file i'm going to do it go back and i'm going to do it here itself now let me remove the script tag we don't require the script tag so here i'll remove all of these things so let us do it from first i'm going to add a new paragraph first i'm going to add paragraph i'm going to assign an id to it so i'm going to assign an id as hello so this is an id which i have assigned right so now what i'm going to do i'm going to add the script tag inside this now script now i'm going to add my function that is function function name i'm going to give it as add then i'm going to give it as p1 and p2 here p1 comma p2 then i'm going to open the brackets now i'm going to add return p1 plus p2 right so i'm going to close it now the function definition is over now we have to invoke that function to invoke that function what i'm going to use i'm going to use a new concept that is document dot get element by id you can see this get element by id that means whatever id i have assigned here that will be taken into consideration that i am getting that element by that id name then what i am going to do i am going to select the function name that is add after selecting the function name what i am going to do i am going to put inner html now what does this inner html do inner html is nothing but changing the contents of that particular html right so when you use inner html in id you have used id right so here document dot get element by id of that function name dot inner html changes the content now what is the content should should be put now this is the content which should be put right so what i'm going to do i'm going to take inner html equals i'm going to give my function name right i'm going to give my function name of i'm going to put it as 5 comma 8 i'm going to give the numbers here right 5 comma 8 now close it now what i'm going to do come back let me check this is the id name which we have to give not the function name let me tell repeat it once again get element by id so what is the id over there id is hello so let us change it to hello okay now control save it you can see the number is 15 why the number is 15 5 plus 8 is sorry 13 right 5 plus 8 is 13 if i give some different numbers here maybe i'm going to give it as 10 and i'm going to give it as 8 now go and check the answer should be 18 you can see the answer is 18 so that is how you document dot get element by id works and there's one more thing that is document dot write if you use this you can write you can write whatever text you want now for example i'm going to put hello world right i'm going to close it you can see hello world has been appeared here right when you refresh it hello world is there now i'll just remove this and i'll check the output hello is there right so document dot write can be used like that now there are different variations of document dot uh, get element also for example i'm going to show you that is document dot get if you go there you can see id is also there class name is also there by name is also there by tag name is also there right so different things available for get elements let us see one more example of how exactly we could do it now what i'm going to do to avoid confusion let me do 
uh, one more create a one more file here so let us name it as function dot uh, html right so here i'm gonna put uh, exclamatory mark tab entire html structure would be there so here i'm gonna create a script tag script inside that i'm gonna create a function so function i'm gonna declare it as sum of a comma b right so i'm gonna write the return command here that means it should return this that is a plus b so this is how you can invoke also now this is how the function creation is done so after that i'm gonna create an object now that is result equals sum of a plus sorry i'm gonna give the uh, numbers i'm gonna give it as pi comma phi again i'm gonna take command again i'm gonna put alert of sum not sum here remember not sum because you have created and stored it in result you must give result here right so then only your output will be displayed so now again close it save it open with live server you can see the output 10 5 plus plan that is 10 if you want to do any changes here just change this i'm gonna put a into b again answer should be 25 so let's see the answer is 25 here right so this is how we can use functions the next thing which we are going to learn now is conditional statements right so there are different conditional statements available just like in c c plus plus programming languages you can find conditional statements is right the same way we have here the if statement like the if statement evaluates a condition in parentheses and if the result is true it executes a block of code very simple now you are giving a condition in the if if that condition is true the set of statements will be executed that is what if statement mean right so if statement evaluates the expression in its parenthesis and converts the result into a boolean right so let this is an example let condition is equal to equal to year is equal to equal to 2015 equality evaluates to true or false right so this is an example this is the syntax that is if condition of right so let us see an example of exactly how do we do it great so i'm going to remove this now uh, we don't require it so i'm going to remove this so here i'm going to add let year right so let year equals i'm going to use prompt because i have to enter the data here so prompt i'm going to use in which year ECMAScript, ECMAScript is a specification for JavaScript, ECMAScript 2015 published, now when was 2015 Java specification published, obviously it was year 2015 right, so what should we do here is, we have to click enter first, just come back down enter so now what i'm going to do i'm going to put if if year equals to equals to 2015 i have only one condition that is if it is 2000 if the entered number is 2015 then i have to alert what will i alert you guessed it right this is a very lame question because the question itself answers 2015 so let it be just for an example here right semicolon so control save now you can see we have got an output in which year ECMAScript 2015 published now I'll give it as 2015 click OK then the answer is you guessed it right now but if I give some other number for example if it is 2016 let us see the output it does not say anything why does it not say because there is only one condition which i have given that is if year is equal to equal to 2015 then only it evaluates just understand that there is only one condition here now what i am going to do here is i am going to ask one more question maybe i am going to ask when was when did india get independence so I'm going to ask this question now. Everybody knows this answer, right? So this is 1947. So 
so now again I'm gonna go here again I'm gonna give 19 not that save it come back here 1947 click you'll get you guessed it right right but if you give some other number let us see maybe I'm gonna be 1948 okay nothing happens why because we have given only one condition not more than one condition right but the beauty of JavaScript is it allows multiple conditions to be played just like programming languages you have if if else else if right nested if the same way even JavaScript in JavaScript also you can use all those things so now what I'm gonna do I'm gonna put one more condition here that is else if the answer is wrong what I'm gonna put I'm gonna put alert answer is wrong now semicolon control as you can see when did India get independence 19 when I click on when I click here 1947 you're gonna get you guessed it right sorry about the spelling you guessed it right now when I put 1950 okay you're gonna see the answer that is answer is wrong right so you can put two conditions that this one condition you can put and if it is true you'll get this if it is false you'll get this but what if you have more than one conditions and what if you have so many conditions even JavaScript allows you to do that now how do we do it instead of else what we are gonna put again we are gonna put as if and inside this you are gonna put if what you are gonna put you are gonna put it as year greater than if year is greater than 1948 then only your answer must be wrong right so here well, let us check the output when I give 1947 the answer is you guessed it right but when I put the answer as 1948 nothing happens why because it should be greater than 1948 to print this statement right so let us give it as 1950 and check it 1950 then you can see the answer is wrong here why because I have given a condition that if if it is only greater than 1947 then greater than 1948 then only the answer should be as wrong right but if you give 1948 as the thing you won't get this message it will only be displayed once you put number which is greater than 1948 right so this is how you can use else if if you want one more else if that one so you can put for example else if right else if I'm gonna put this is the syntax just remember else space if inside that what I'm gonna put here is less than 1945 then I am gonna print it as I'm gonna put it as wrong only wrong this time so I'm gonna close it again control s now let us check the output if I put 1944 it should only display wrong right it should only display wrong so I hope you guys understood how do we use else if statements here right if you remove all these things this is only one condition if you remove this uh, if you remove this there are two conditions if you put this there are three conditions right so like this you can put however conditions you want now that is called as nested if statement right so this is how we can use if statement in your programs now we will learn about this is all the examples right else if and all those things we just did it so now we will be dealing with loops that is while and for loops now we often need to repeat actions now to repeat actions we are going to use loops right both two loops are available that is while and for now inside while also there are few uh, specifications for that but we'll study about while and for now okay for example outputting goods from a list one after the another or just running the same code for each number from 1 to 10 loops are a way to repeat the same code multiple times now this helps us in many ways if you write one particular block of code it can be made sure that it can run 100 times 200 times maybe if you want to make it to 1000 times also it can run right so that is why the name loop itself says that it should go on a loop it should never stop right you can give the conditions inside it to stop as well so that is what you can use loops for your programs the first thing which you gonna learn is while loop so let us see an example before that this is the syntax that is while of condition very simple the syntax is very simple while of condition while you are going to give a condition inserted and whatever you want to 
put in the loop body you can put it there while condition is true the the code from the loop body is executed a single execution of the loop body is called as an iteration now if you executed one time it is called as an iteration if you execute two times it is called as two iterations the same way three four five six ten iterations twenty iteration it goes on like that now we're in the last program so what i'm going to do i'm going to remove this now we don't require it so inside the script what i'm going to put i'm going to put this while condition now before while condition i have to assign a variable so that is i'm going to assign i is equal to zero first right i have to assign iteration that is i is equal to zero and after that i'm going to give a condition that is while of i greater than three now while i is greater than three i should perform something what should i perform i should alert i right so i should alert i after alerting i i should increment the i so what i'm going to do i'm going to go and see the output you can see first is zero one two three 3 does not come. Why? Because I have given less than 3. Now if I put equals less than or equal to, again go and see 1, 0, 1, 2, 3. You get 3 also, right? So I am going to use less than 3, right? So this is how conditions work. Now how many, it, it repeats for how many times you want it to be repeated. Now if I give it as 30, it repeats for 30 times. You can see now 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, you know, just like that you can repeat it for many times. But let me keep it as 3 here, right? So let me keep it as 3 again, refresh it. Now see, it happens. I'm just gonna again save it first. Sometimes it gets like this. So let me do one thing. I'm gonna open with live server. Now it is fine. 0, 1, 2 and that's it, right? So we can increment while like this also. Now maybe if you want to give 30 also you can give right so this is about while loop now i told you there are few variations of uh, while loop as well so there are two kinds of while loops that is do while and while do now what is do while now do while is nothing but the condition can be moved below the loop body that means the function first performs the task and then checks for the condition so this is what is called as do while loop now loop will first execute the body and then check the condition and while it is through the execute it again and again now whatever what happens here is in the previous one what did we do we check the condition first then we did our program right but here what happens first you do the program then you check for the condition so this form of syntax should be used only when you want the body of the loop to execute at least once regardless of the condition right you can use this form when you want to execute the per program at least for once now usually the other form is preferred that is while so this is used in the rare cases but other form is used right so while do was already done this is do while now let us check the output of this as well yes so i'm here so this is the do while right sorry this is the while do the while statement is here then the program is doing here so now i'm going to remove this now i'm going to add again i should add this i first i have to initialize this to zero then i'm going to do here do i'm going to put this condition alert of i right then after this again i'm going to increment this again after this i am going to put it as while here that this is what is do while so i'm gonna go now again refresh you can see the output zero one two and end what i'm gonna put i'm gonna put it as zero now check let us check the output now see what happens here is zero is even initialized and here i have given less than zero now less than zero cannot happen why because already it is in a initialized to zero but here it will be printed as zero here first right sorry refresh it you can see the zero will be appeared here so this is what while loop while a loop does right so this is do while exactly now previously we did while do and this is do while so it is not usually called as while do it is just called as while but here in this perf uh, in this uh, form of while it is called as do while now let me go to the next concept that is the for loop now for loop is very important the for loop is more complex also but it is also most commonly used loop like right? it is most commonly used that is what i told you it is very important now what does this exactly do let us understand now there are four th 
things available here you can see that begin i is equal to 0 we have initialized the condition first that is i is equal to 0 executes upon once upon entering the loop yes condition we are giving it now i less than 3 is the condition it has three major if for the syntax for begin condition step right so there are three things inside that three parameters the first parameter is begin second parameter is condition third parameter is the step and the fourth parameter is the body section right so what does condition do Con in condition we are just going to give a condition like less than 3 greater than 4 greater than 10 right all these things we are going to give it in the condition step in the step one what are we going to do we are going to increment it like we are going to execute the body after each iteration this determine this tells us that how many times should we terminate and also i plus plus means greater i minus minus means decrement so this is how you can use for loop so let us see an example of exactly how do we use for loop in our programs now here what i'm going to do is i'm going to remove the while statement so here while loop tells you that each statement first you have to increment first you have to give the initialization then you have to use the condition then you have to give the loop body but here for all the three things you can do it like this for let i is equal to 0 semicolon i less than 3 semicolon i plus plus all the three things can be done here right so again you can open here and i'll put the loop body that is the loop body is this alert of i now you can see all the things works properly like just like the while loop here right 0 1 2 and exit if i give it as 5 control s you can see 5 times it's executed 0 1 2 3 4 and 5 now here if you want i is equal to 1 also you can give it it starts from 1 see it starts from 1 right so 1 2 3 and 4 exit so this is how you can use for loop also right now you can maybe you can give it as i into i also alert maybe you can give it as dollar let's check the output i'm not sure about it but let's check the output first i then back tick close 1 2 3 4 yes you will get the same output if you directly display it using the variable argument also like dollar you use the dollar in previous classes right the same thing if you want to use it like this also your output will be displayed so this is about the for loop right so there are so many different types of programs which you can run in it for example you can add addition multiplication you can add complex programming you can add so many things inside for loop because for loop is very important usually in all the programs for loop is actually used right the next thing which we are going to learn about is the switch statement right what is a switch statement a switch statement can replace multiple if checks right so it gives more descriptive way to compare a value with multiple variants now it it has this multiple variants the cases now what happens if first case have first case is true what happens if the second case is true what happens if the third case is true right it can give you all these things when you use a if statement now this is the syntax of if uh, switch statement that is switch of x a condition should be given inside that x case value 1 write all the loop body there again case value 2 again put the loop value there again break break command is used to break from that particular statement right you can see all the description over there the value of x is checked for a strict equality to the value from the first case that is value 1 then value 2 and so on if the quality equality is found switch starts to execute code starting from the corresponding case until the nearest break right so if no case is matched then the default code is executed now let us check an example of how do we do it and we'll make sure you understand it so let me tell you how exactly we do the switch case here so what i'm going to do i'm going to create a variable called grade variable grade equals i'm going to put grade as a again uh, just semicolon it now i'm going to use switch statement now that is switch of grade so i'm going to give switch of grade that is a so a is your switch of grade open sorry open it like this now i'm going to give the cases cases of a first case if a is there it should be alert good right close it and after this again break statement that cases breaks right so after this again if the case is b 
I am gonna use alert of average so now again close it again put break now if I go and check the output just re click you can see good is there why because in the case a alert good is there now if here if I go and click B and click on this just remove this first yeah now if I go back let me first do this as using this one right yeah just remove this yes now grade is B here if the grade is B alert average will be there now let me go and check the output you can see the average is B here like that you can give different things over there to get your answers right so this was about your switch statement now let us learn about uh, JS forms now we, in HTML we learnt about how to create a form and how to insert the elements how to insert the text how to insert a checkbox and a radio buttons right so all those things we learned in our HTML but in JavaScript forms we are just gonna see how exactly it works how can we actually do some form creativity in the form now this is a form uh, JavaScript function for a form right so this says that uh, whenever we don't uh, put any field inside the uh, particular uh, particular form element then it should alert empty field and return false so it will not take the input so let us check how do we do it in a program first let me create a new uh, file called jsforms.html right so we are gonna use the sorry it's html right so just go here rename it now what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna create the HTML and also the JavaScript here so let me get the structure first right so the structure is here you can see the structure inside the body I'm gonna put form and create the form I'm gonna give my form name as form my form right after that I'm gonna give action as nothing because that is a different topic so action I'm gonna give nothing action equals I'm gonna give nothing right so again after that I'm gonna give on submit now this is a JavaScript function now what happens whenever we click on the submit button it should do something what should it do I'm gonna give it as I'm not gonna give uh, here first let me create other things and let's uh, do it later so method I again method I'm gonna leave it empty and close the form like this now after that inside the form I'm gonna give the name first name colon input type right input type is equal to text right so input type is text here so input type text after that I'm gonna put again name that is first name right so I'm gonna give F N A M E so I'm gonna close the input tag now again after the name I'm gonna put submit button input type is equal to submit so again value is equal to submit right so after that I'm gonna close it and I'll close the form as well form is closed here right so what happens now here is I'm just gonna check the output I'm sure name and uh, this would come right so name and now when I click submit nothing really happens so what I'm gonna do on submit I should do something here right so before that I'm gonna create a script tag so let me do a script tag uh, inside the head again I'm gonna give it a script let me create a script properly script right now I'm gonna add a function here that is function I'm gonna give the form function name as validate right after that I'm gonna close this open this now here I'm gonna create a variable called variable x equals document dot forms now this is very important document dot forms of I'm gonna give my form name this is the syntax you must be able to see it it's form name what is my form name my form name is my form right so I'm gonna give my form right my form again I'm gonna open what is the name well, should we should be used for this my name we should make it should be inside the quotes here remember this should be inside the quotes 
again here also open quote and inside the code name is first name right f name so after that dot value right so dot value semicolon right so if i'm going to give a condition now if x is equal to equal to nothing that means it's if it is empty what i'm going to put alert i'm going to put name should be filled right so after that what i'm going to put i'm going to semicolon it now return false now what does this statement actually say let me open it what does this statement actually say this statement says that we are creating a variable called x and whatever is inside my form i'm taking it the name i'm taking the name here that is the first name i'm taking it here the value of that i'm taking it here and storing it in x if the x is empty i'm going to display as name should be filled that is alert name should be filled and return false so now here on submit what i'm going to put here is i'm going to put return space validate of the function name there right so i'm going to put the function name control s go back see the output just save it now if i go just put it empty and submit you can see the alert that is name should be filled now click on okay now when you click on this and submit it submits right but it doesn't store anything right but here when i click on submit name should be filled so this is how you can use function and create a forms like this right you can also do it for your age you can also do it for so many other things as well right forms can be used in javascript using this function also so this is about javascript forms i want you to look at the function first let's check the function properly and i want you guys to do it in your computer systems right just check it form name is my form action we are not giving anything on submit what should happen i am calling this return of the function name right i'm calling this i'm invoking this here now method also i'm not giving anything form this name and this name should match or else your program won't work for example i'm going to just give it as name and see the output here when i click on submit nothing really happens why because this this is different here this is f name and this is name when i click on f and control save it again go back and click on submit you can see the output will be displayed right so i want you guys to go through the look and uh, take a screenshot of it so that it would be helpful for you right so this was about forms